What is up, guys? It is the Sound Alchemist, and I'm joined by Gershwan. And once again, we got Howl Hounds and Nurglings in the building, so that's keep, that. Keep that in <laughs> mind. As always, we are back at it answering your questions in another epic installment of For the Greater. Yeah. This is a video series where we answer the questions left by you, the viewer. If you have a question for us, comment down below. Put question in front of your question because we get those questions first. That's what the Fool06 did. He asks Tao are said to be immune from chaos taint. Hmm. Can Tao worship chaos at their own free will? Do the Tao have souls? First of all, free will with the Tao? That ain't a thing. Ethereal's got that by the balls. Um. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. When it comes to the Tao, the the main reason why I think they haven't, you know, kind of jumped on the chaos wan bandwagon is because of the ethereal control. Ethereals produce some type of brain control, pheromone control, something that unites the Tao to their leadership. And if the Tao were introduced to chaos, that's going to cause a whole lot of surprise, chaos. So that's probably why they don't they haven't jumped onto that. Um, another thing is that they have a very small warp signature. Now, we talked about this in a previous episode, whereas like a Imperial Psyker is like a uh, burning campfire in the darkness. A Tau would be like lighting a match. You, when there's two types of flame in the darkness that is the warp, obviously they're going to be attracted to the bigger flame, which is why Chaos and Tau don't really mingle too much, unless you're talking about the Star Tide Nexus incident where they got basically put into the warp. Zeech kind of confused their brains, made them hate any type of auxiliary, crew, uh, Vespid, that kind of thing. So it is possible they can be influenced by it. They can definitely die by chaos, as was seen with uh, Farsight, fighting off, fighting off uh, corn bloodthirsters and stuff like that. So they do kind of intermingle, just not very often. Yeah, um, and then I also created a 40 Facts video explaining how, like, uh, GW tends to do this cyclical thing where, um, in the beginning, the old ones were psychically powerful and they were the good guys. And then all of a sudden came the evil guys who were not warp or psychically powerful and they were all about, like, science and, like, um, just trying to work together, um, to defeat the warp-powered, uh, creatures the war in heaven happened and then the tables were kind of flipped when the old ones created like the elder the orcs and all these other psychically powerful creatures to to fight the non-psychic power creatures the necrons yeah the necrons and then um then the enslaver plague happened and then chaos happened because of all these psychically powerful races and now what I, my theory is that the uh eldar created the tau who are non-psychic creatures to defeat the psychic creatures, which is chaos, which is the new enemy. So it's like it's like a a, a cycle, uh, just going back and forth, um, and kind of flipped at the same time. <laughs> but yeah, I don't think the tower will ever be corruptible. Uh, yeah, I don't. I feel like too many. They have a different path than chaos. Yes. Next question comes from Daniel Slater. Who would you rather fight one on one, Horus or the Emperor? Horus, because I think he'll try to like convince me to join him. <laughs> yeah, when it comes to the Emperor, I feel like you could just snap and you'll be disintegrated. Yeah. You at least have a chance with Horus. <laughs> Ooh, this question is loaded. Andrew Mayochi. Imagine, for just a brief moment, that the Emperor created 10 male and 10 female Primarchs. What would be the top three Primarchs that could be cooler than the ones we have now? And would this change work in a parallel 40k universe? Hmm. Uh, this is a really good question. It's one that like I think we should dedicate a little bit more time, but we're gonna I'm not, I'll try to answer it because you, if you do that, you have to get ten. You have to get rid of ten Space Marine. I mean, ten, ten Primarchs. Primarchs. Replace them with ten other Primarchs. Yeah. Um, so I would get rid of the ones that don't really matter, like Perturabal, <laughs> Mortarion. Well, can you get rid of Mortarion? Because like, then who represents Nurgle? That'd be the new one you'd have to create. Because I feel like if you take one from this demon, you'd have to, or like this uh, Chaos Entity, you'd have to replace it with another one that would follow that same Chaos God. In that case, I'm going to get rid of Fulgrim, because he's a Slanesh, and I think 
the female Slanesh would be Traitor Primark would be better. Uh, just because the know, aesthetic. The aesthetic. <laughs> um, and then I would keep Nurgle because a, a, a woman Primark that is devoted to Nurgle sounds gross. <laughs> like the demon Kulabo, that kind of thing? Yeah. And then she, that's gross. She births diseases. Uh, and you kind of already have the thing with Isha. So. Yeah. So I think it has to be like a male character entrapping a female goddess. Um, but she's being, even though she's there against her will, she kind of has to be there because she's whispering the cures to uh, the Eldar and all these other um, material races. Yeah. Well, you could go either way. I think I, w I wouldn't get rid of, uh, or I would, yeah, I wouldn't get rid of Mortarion though. I would get rid of... Uh, yeah, Magnus is right. Well, he's a pivotal point. Uh, he's a really he important point in the Warriors Heresy. Yeah. Um, he did so, nothing wrong. Yeah. So maybe I wouldn't get rid of Magnus and get rid of... Yeah, I would get rid of Angron. Because getting rid of Angron and then introducing a female, like, rage monster would be kind of cool. Um, like a barbarian female that uh, has butcher's nails. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah. Fits the hair. Um... And then now what about loyalists? As a loyalist, Primarchs, who would you get rid of? I think, like, I never really liked the whole idea of, um... <laughs> I never really liked the whole idea of, like, Gilliman. Like, to me, he was just, like, yeah, he's important. He's, like, the face of uh, the Ultramarines. But, like, he's got nothing cool about him. Like, Sanguinius has wings. Um, like, what does Gilliman have? Disproportioned body. <laughs> Give I, that to a female. Yeah, I would like that because then we would get a new model uh, that wouldn't be Gilliman. Because Gilliman looks goofy. He, he's, his proportions aren't right. Um, so yeah, I like that. Yeah, maybe kind of like a, uh, I was thinking like a Roman oh, like female? female warrior. Yeah. That'd be cool, yeah, yeah. Um, I really like the, the Forge World Gilliman. He looks cool. Mm -hmm. Um, very uh, stoic looking. I would, I'd get rid of Dorn. <laughs> what? Yeah, I'd get rid of Dorn and then put a female Dorn. That's kind of. I think that'd be kind of cool. It's like a nurturing, like here's my castle. I'm gonna defend Terra type thing. Um, oh, I wonder if the Space Marines then it would have to be female Space Marines. So it'd be like. Uh, female, like, Sisters of Battle in yellow armor, power armor. It'd be kind of cool. Yeah, I always like playing with, like, the color swaps. Like, color palettes and swapping it with another color. Like, how would the Grey Knights look if they were, like, instead of just literally all gray, if they had, like, a, uh, I don't know, like, maybe black and yellow or, like, green and, I don't know, something like that. It's, it's cool. Play around with the uh, that little template where you can, like, create your own space marine. Yeah. I don't think you should get rid of Falcon. I don't think you should get rid of Lehman Russ. Because if you get rid of Angron, you should you should keep Lehman Russ. Because they're kind of the same thing, but just in opposite uh, yeah. sides. Um, who else would you get rid of and you wouldn't care? I think that I'd agree with you, get rid of Dorn, but change his, like, the whole, like... Fortification. Fortification thing to, like, an Amazonian thing. Like, bring in, like... Jungle camouflage, um, stuff like that. You you guys will find because you guys are constantly asking why doesn't the space marines uh, or why don't space marines recruit from Katachan? With this new change, you would have oh, a there you go a, yeah. a female primate who recruited from Katachan. That'd be cool. Amazonian like yeah, that'd be that'd be cool. That'd be badass. I wonder if they would. Yeah, they would have to have their own codex then because oh, of yeah, the different definitely. models. Yeah. Uh, comment down below. Let us know what you think. This is a really cool concept where you could like create like alternative universes. Yeah. Bring in the aquaticness yeah. <laughs> of the female, like a My Little Mermaid kind of thing. Yeah, I don't know why I put My Little Mermaid. <laughs> Next question comes from Dirt Diver Two Nine. If Gilliman was to fall to chaos, would the Ultramarines and or um, Ultramarine successor chapters follow him to chaos? No, not necessarily. Uh, they're very stoic. And you also have to remember that there's a lot of traitor legion companies that didn't go traitor. It just became successor chapters of unknown origin. <laughs> uh, 
uh, which is what the Blood Ravens are. The Blood Ravens are actually Thousand Sons, or so we're told. So yeah. Uh, next question comes from AMS. How many craft worlds are there? A bunch. Yeah, there's tons. There are a bunch, but not so many that we can't name them all. But we won't name them all because we don't have enough time. And because we don't know. <laughs> uh, next question. Uh, this one is by Defool06. It seems that a couple of traitor Primarchs have earned their demonhood by offering the gene seed of their patron gods to them. So, why do the Chaos Gods value Gene Seeds so much, and is this a good reward to give them this offering to become Demon Princes? So, I mean, I get what you're saying. You, when you think of, like, Gene Seed, you don't think of it being, like, a crazy thing where you could be bestowed to a Demon Primark level. That's like going to the king and saying, I've got three chickens, oh, now I'm a knight, and I've got my own castle and everything. Yeah. Yeah, but Gene Seed is really, I wouldn't say rare, but it's very valued in the 40k universe because it creates Space Marines. Space Marines are the epitome of, I guess, a soldier. And of course, in a time of war, you need all the soldiers you get, you can get, so. Yeah. I guess that's why. <laughs> that's why. That's like saying, I bring you Gene Seed to create your own army, or to bolster your armies. Mm-hmm. Which... I don't really see why Chaos needs it, since, since they could just keep popping out demons, but yeah. you need your space marines. Next question comes from Jared Miller. Uh, who is your favorite commissar? I would vo vote Cyphus Kane. It's all about Commissar Yarek. Yeah. The man chased down the beast, found him, got trapped, and then the beast was like, you know what? You're tough. And then gave, gave him a... Uh, Gave him freedom. Gave him a ship and said, yeah. get out of here. I want, him a, I want to hunt you again. And he gave him a pass. Yeah. He's like, I got you after so many years. But it's like Tom and Jerry. It's like every time he, Tom catches Jerry, like, kind of lets him go. Does he? Subconscious. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's his uh, id, ego, fighting. and Yeah. Uh, next question is the last question. I feel like we have this question every single Greater Wall episode, and we've answered it multiple times, but we'll do it again. Conrad asks, So my dog is yellow, fat, possessed by Slanesh. She eats both of you in the same time, and she has warp powers that that what you talk about last time. Um, see, I can't remember what we talked about last time. Um, and she starts her own Slanesh cult. She's so cute... This is how she mainly gathers her followers. So my question is, can she rebel against her patrons and become a god? I guess I could have just read the last sentence. <laughs> um, so, can a... Chaos worshipper, chaos follower, rebel against their chaotic, chaotic patron? Yep. Kind of no. It's like you're selling your soul to the devil and there's no way to kind of reclaim it. Yeah, if you try to trick the devil, he's just going to turn around and get you. Um, and th yeah, like you said, you do sell your soul. So once the um, chaos god sees that you're not really working in his favor, it's gonna take that soul, or make them into a chaos spawn. Oh yeah, that's that's even a worse um, outcome. Um, you're just like this deformed um, creature, like in Rick and Morty. <laughs> oh, her name was Summer. Summer, that was her name. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And those were the questions for today. If you guys have more questions for us, comment down below. Uh, yeah. Remember, keep putting that question in front of your question because we get to those questions first. And uh, we got some social media thingies. It's Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and Patreon and, and other that. stuff. This is Gershwan. I'm Sound Alchemist, and we are out. <laughs>